instead of Bitcoin, we could be talking about digital currency. The entire world is firmly on the digital currency path. You, you know my views on, on CBDCs and you know that uh, um, I have pushed uh, that project, uh, Fabio Panetta is working hard on that together with members in the entire Euro system with a high level task force that is working really hard on, on moving uh, Council, forward. 114 but countries are actively pursuing CBDCs. Of those 114 countries, 10% have already adopted them, 16% have launched a variety of pilot programs, and 57% are researching or developing digital currencies. So, needless to say, there is no turning back. A recent survey by the Cato Institute found that only 16% of Americans support a CBDC. In the United States, um, there was an executive order by President Biden to actually uh, expect a uh, similar effort and focus and progress on, on CBDCs. Crypto. Today, I'm proud to say that under the UK's presidency, the group of the world's seven most advanced economies, the G7, is launching a set of public policy principles for retail central bank digital currencies, CBDCs. That's right, because that's a central government backed mm -hmm. um, uh, electronic transfer. And it can be denominated in dollars, it could be denominated in euros, it could be denominated in some new language that's made up. But that has something that backs it up. It has a government that says, if at the end of the day there's a run on this stuff, everybody wants theirs out, the United States government promises there will be something to back it up. I think it's time. If the Fed doesn't develop its own digital currency, America's gonna fall behind. The US financial system is still pretty old school when it comes to moving money around. And that's not a great way to run a modern global economy. As oh, we explore the possibility of a US CBDC and the future of the global financial system, we must keep in mind that we may very well be in the midst of a new digital asset space race. When Maxine Waters, who has been promoting this, said that we need this to compete with China, which is so crazy. Yeah. It's like saying we need communism to compete with communism. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what? <laughs> because that's what it yeah. is. Yeah. If you want to compete with communists, you have to be a communist. Like, what? Yeah. Like, digital currency that's centralized by the state is terrifying because they'll connect it to a social credit score system. Yeah. If they connect it to a social credit score system, Tulsi Gabbard, I don't like what you said on the Joe Rogan experience. Mm -hmm. We're going to go and eliminate your ability to fly. Right. You can't fly. You can't travel. You right. can't buy gas anymore. Yeah. You can, which is what they do oh, in China. That. Are you there? Oh, for a central bank digital currency? Yeah. Yes. I think it's time. President's executive order on responsible development of digital assets. This will protect consumers, investors, and the environment. That last one's a tell because I think they would impose certain criteria. You're filling up too much tank of gas. Wait a minute, climate change, you can't be doing that. The media make it sound like it's a great thing. <laughs> Well, uh, if you don't care about your privacy and you want the government to have even more control over the economy, then maybe it is. But if you uh, don't trust uh, central authority, then you should see this immediately as something that is very problematic. And if you do buy or do the wrong thing, they can easily cut off your money. It's gone. It's all gone. What's all gone? The money in your account. It didn't do too well. It's gone. What do you mean? I, I have $100. Not anymore, you don't. Poof. Please step aside for people who actually have money with the bank. Next, please. After vaccine mandates for cross-border truckers were imposed in January by Canada and the United States, a so-called Freedom Convoy was organized in protest. Truck drivers traveled across Canada to Ottawa, then parked themselves downtown in a show of solidarity. The protests have expanded to oppose government restrictions more generally against unvaccinated people. Banks have already started to freeze the accounts of people involved in the protests, and they are warning there will be dire financial consequences to come. If your truck is being used in these protests, your corporate accounts will be frozen. The insurance on your vehicle will be suspended. And it's gone. The consequences are real and they will bite. It is time for you to go home. And let me also be clear 
that we will have zero tolerance for the establishment of new blockades or occupations. That stopped the protests. This is something that they care about. And the question is, why would these organizations care so much about a central bank digital currency? Is it really because they are really that invested in cross-border transactions? Of course not. It's because this is something that could help them advance their ideology of having more central authority and more supervisory power over the average American. The advocates make a digital currency sound so good. As trusted as cash, as convenient as a payment app, yet also benefit from the same blockchain technology which underpins cryptocurrencies. To keep up with the changing ways that people pay, the Bank of Canada is exploring a digital Canadian dollar, also known as a central bank digital currency. Simply put, this would be a digital version of cash, but it wouldn't replace cash. It would have the same dollar value and it would be accessible to anyone and everyone. And if the problem you're trying to solve is fast, almost frictionless ability to send money across the country, do it rapidly, send it around the world be able to send it to your cousins in Argentina. If that's what you're trying to solve, a central bank digital currency does that. Central bank digital currencies could be a digital version of money, a bit like a digital banknote that could be used alongside physical notes and coins. Oh, please. They want to move to a cashless society, which would basically mean the Federal Reserve, Treasury Department would have supervisory jurisdiction over all of your transactions. Cash is independence. Yeah, you have the cash in your wallet, you can go, you can make these transactions. It's not dependent on somebody else. It's uh, private. It's private. If I buy anything, the government doesn't know it. MasterCard kind of knows it, but even MasterCard uses product codes. So they don't say, you know, Jim bought a Snickers. It says Jim bought miscellaneous merchandise at a retail place. So the government doesn't know what you're doing. But with this new central bank digital currency, they will, because they maintain the ledger. So if I buy, you know, Ron DeSantis' new book, or I go to a Donald Trump rally, or whatever it may be, the government using artificial intelligence and having that information, which they would, are able to profile you. They say, well, this guy kind of looks like a conservative, and maybe he's MAGA. And then you've got a target on your back. Start off by asking, what's new? We all know that Canadians have digital money already. It's called a bank account. So what's the difference that this new digital currency by the central bank would bring. What's the problem you're trying to solve? The answer, of course, is that it would be deposited in a government bank account. A central bank digital currency would mean that Canadians would have their money deposited with the government rather than with a private financial institution. And that the central bank would then be in direct competition with commercial banks. Okay, of I course. want you to think about this. Who's for it? Well, the top five banks are for it. They think CBDC is a great idea. Why would Chase, B of A, Wells City, why would these guys want CBDC? Well, because there's not a founder in those banks. Those banks are pretty much working for the US government. No, they're not. Yes, they are. The government dictates the rates. The government gives them money. The government bails them out. They have to work with the government on a daily basis, pretty much. So they're pretty much owned by the government. Not necessarily it's still on the stock market, but they communicate more with the government than they do with you. What? A digital dollar could not only be switched off, the Fed would be able to force negative interest rates on Americans if it wanted them to spend more, penalizing savers. A CBDC is very likely to have an expiration date. It's not just about uh, digital forms of physical currency. You can have programmability, you know, um, units of central bank currency with expiry dates. A CBDC in China has expiration dates and it serves as an encouragement for consumers, for users, to use it. Essentially, it will be use or lose it type situation. As you might already know, expiration dates would make it virtually impossible for you to save your digital currency for future use. It will become worthless on a date that is defined by its issuer. On the bank-to-bank -bank level, a real-time payment system called FedNow is expected to begin in July. It's not a digital currency, but an upgrade to what some call our antiquated banking system. The first thing you need to understand is there is a difference between CBDC 
and FedNow. FedNow is simply the app on your phone that allows you to transfer money. Just because FedNow is released in July does not mean that CBDC will exist. FedNow is just the technology to do money transfers. However, FedNow was an important step to happen before CBDC could exist. No one would have been able to use CBDC unless they were first able to transfer the money around. Let me explain how CBDCs work. Instead of you keeping your money in your local bank, you keep it in the biggest bank of them all, the US Federal Reserve. As a normal person, you would not notice any difference. You would still log into your local bank website and check your balance. However, your money would no longer be sitting in your local bank. It would actually be sitting in the Federal Reserve. What you would be looking at when you check your balance is an intermediated wallet that is managed by your local bank. Your bank would be functioning as a middleman. The old dollars will move out of the old banking system and into the Federal Reserve. You will access your money through an app on your phone to make electronic transactions. Of course, this uh, would bring no new benefit to consumers. We already have all of the technological benefits of electronic transfers of cash today. But it would bring plenty of new risks. What's the problem you're trying to solve? Issues that people care about, such as ensuring users' money would be safe and secure, that it could work with other ways to pay, would be energy efficient and available to everyone. A potential CBDC could offer businesses and consumers new ways to pay in the future. Sometimes government does things that may appear to be benevolent, but really are kind of like a wolf in sheep's clothing. This is a wolf coming as a wolf. The government controls your bank account. It can surveil what you're doing, what you're spending, and potentially abuse your civil liberties. We've seen what happens when government has too much control of our money. Runaway inflation. We're paying for it today. And this is where the digital world uh, starts to divide. There are those who say we want to be able to run ours independent of a government, but we want it regulated so people can understand it and trust it. And that means you have to do certain things like banks do, like know your customers right. so you know that you're not doing right. drug money laundering, right. right? Or you're not helping out tax cheats or you're not helping a country like Russia evade financial sanctions. Test what makes CBDCs so appealing to some Americans? They found that 42% would support a CBDC if it were used to combat illicit financial activity, 40% would support it if it were used to ensure that welfare payments were actually spent on essentials, 33% would support it if it were used to bank the unbanked, and 32% would support it if it were used to prevent recessions. As you might have noticed, support for these supposed benefits is not very high. Not only that, but the primary benefit, that of fighting financial crime, is unlikely to be achieved under a CBDC system. <laughs> but there's another part of the crypto world that says, no, we like it. That nobody can tell who came on this system and what they're using this system for. They would describe it as getting away of the prying eyes of the government. So what is it that the Bitcoin, what problem is it solving for? And now we get into a very different space. Many of those who support Bitcoin say, well, I don't want the government to be the one who manages the currency. I don't want the government to be able uh, to be the transfer medium for sending money to a my cousin. A decentralized financial system. Well, it's more than decentralized. Yeah. It's a non-governmental no ability to penetrate. They don't like Bitcoin. They don't like some of these other things. And the reason is they don't control it. That's why they don't like it. We will take whatever action is needed to fulfill the ECB's mandate to pursue price stability and to safeguard financial stability. An author back in the days wrote a business book called Only the Paranoid Survive, Andy Grove. Let's stay a little bit paranoid, okay? One final note, it's not just about digital forms of physical currency. You can have programmability. 
you could have, as I argue in my book, a potentially better and uh, some people might see it or a darker world where the government decides that units of central bank money can be used to purchase some things but not other things that it deems less desirable like say ammunition or drugs or pornography or something of the sort and that is very powerful in terms of the use of a CBDC. This whole CBDC thing comes down to two things. If you like to be controlled, you're for CBDC. If you want to think for yourself and not be controlled, you're not for CBDC. The last thing we need is to give government and politicians more control of our money after they have failed so disastrously. I think it's time.